All right, now we're going to talk about ocean upwelling and ocean downwelling, and then how does that influence uh, climate, and then also how does that influence life. So let's draw a picture of a continent, and then over here is an ocean, and then over here is the ocean floor. So when sunlight comes down, it's going to heat up the water and it's also going to heat up the continent. But a continent has less specific heat than what water does. So a continent cannot store a whole lot of heat like water can. So that what is going to happen is a continent heats up very quickly during the daytime and then at night it cools off very quickly. So let's say that during the daytime this continent gets very, very hot. Okay, then at nighttime that heat is going to start to come out of the continent and back into the atmosphere. So that hot air, which is rising, has to go somewhere. And so it's going to go offshore like this. So it's going to make a wind system that is going to be blowing in this direction. So we're going to call that an offshore wind system. Okay, now as it's blowing across the surface of the water, it's going to start to make the water move in this direction. Now, uh, that water has to be replaced. So that water down here, this deep water, then will take the place of the water that's moving in this direction. So this is going to, call, it's going to cause upwelling of the water. Now what would happen though if we reverse the, the situation? So uh, in the, what can happen is if the ocean has more heat than what the land does, then the situation is reversed. And so the ocean would start to give off its heat and it would cause a wind that would blow in this direction and that's going to be called an onshore wind and then what that's going to do is it's going to reverse this thing and then you're going to have down uh, welling. So it's possible to have both upwelling and it's possible to have downwelling close, uh, close to the coastline of a continent and it's due to, to heat differences. So what difference does this make? Well, when the water is upwelling, it's going to bring nutrients with it. So materials that used to be on the floor of the ocean can be caught up in that current and it can be brought up. So that's going to cause, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, fish activity and things like that that are going on over here. Uh, it can also, uh, you can see that it's going to affect uh, the, the climate as well because of the way that these wind systems are blowing. So this is uh, going to be related to El Nino and La Nina. So you may have heard of those words and it has to do with this upwelling and downwelling of materials caused by temperature differences. Okay, the second method of having upwelling and downwelling is the removal of water at the equator. So at the equator, it's going to be hotter, which means there's going to be more evaporation. So if at the equator, so let's say this is the surface of the water, and now this represents the equator right here, then as this water is evaporating and going up into the sky, it has to be replaced. So water from deeper can be upwelled to take the place of the water that's evaporating. And so again, you can have upwelling. Uh, in places, so what would be the opposite of this? So if evaporation is going to be causing upwelling, what would be a process that would cause downwelling? Well, we would need to add water to that. And so that would be precipitation could cause a downwelling. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what are ocean waves.